What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Two years ago, I made a video that is still pretty popular on my channel. It's still one of my best performing videos with 27,000 views, which is crazy. For some obscure reason, this video got picked up by, you know, the, the YouTube algorithm. And it's still going pretty strong, despite the fact that it hasn't aged well, honestly. Two years have passed and obviously there have been changes in logic, but also I've learned a lot more about music, making mockups and mixing in general. And since I'm still getting questions from time to time about this, you know, I just decided to kind of have a look at what I did and it's just honestly, it's pretty bad. <laughs> so I decided to do an update, kind of started over and created a new template using pretty much the same instruments. So let me just show you first how this template sounds like like and then we're gonna talk about how to get there. All right, before we start, let me just say that this template is of course available for download on my Patreon. So first of all, what I think is important to discuss is what is realistically achievable, you know, just by simply using the stock sounds. What I think is pretty easy to achieve if you know what you're doing, is a pretty good sounding mix regardless of the type of music you write, but something that you will not be able to overcome no matter what you do, is the lack of samples because, you know, that's simply content that is missing, yeah? So, uh, for example, in this mock-up, some of the best sounding parts are, you know, in my opinion, this trumpet. I think this sounds pretty good, but part of the reason is just, you know, because this instrument, you know, has a lot of articulations. So you can practically switch to the articulation that is most appropriate for the passage of music you're writing. Like for example, here, we're going from this expressive long into uh, some shorts and some marcatos and so on. Unfortunately, this is not gonna be the case for all the instruments that we have in this template. Like for example, pretty much all the instruments that are hosted in the sampler, you know, they just literally have two or three articulations, like in the case of the French horns, which is not bad, but it's limiting. And you'll know what I mean as I play the beginning, you know, the opening on the French horns. This is not terrible by any means, but it's going to sound instantly fake. It's going to sound instantly as a, as a virtual instrument because we literally only have three articulation to key switch. We have, if we go into the mapping zone, you can see, uh, where is it? We can see that we literally only have two dynamic layers, if we're lucky, you know, one dynamic for the crescendo but also we have no round robins. So in a piece like this that has many repeated notes, this is literally going to be the same sample repeated over and over, yeah? And that's why it sounds fake. Yes, there's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing you can do about it regardless how good the mix is. Yes, it had to be said because we're, li we're lacking content here and we can't make that up out of nowhere. But knowing this, having this little piece of information, maybe you're gonna be using these libraries differently the next time you'll be writing a piece. Maybe you won't be writing a piece that uses as many repeated notes because you know that it's gonna be a little bit less realistic than doing something that plays uh, to the strength of these samples. Yes, let me just show you some of the processing I have going on for some of these instruments. Because we said achieving a good mix is pretty much all we can do at this stage. Starting with the trumpets, you see that even if they're playing in unison for the most part, I'm pretty much just using all four of them playing at the same time. And I VQ them slightly differently, you know, like so. And also if you need to stop the video and 
take some screenshots, you can do that. That's probably gonna be the easier way because I'm gonna go through this pretty quickly. And quite importantly, I pitched them in different, slightly different amounts, just to give the impression of a trumpet section. So the third trumpet is minus five cents, and same goes with trumpet four, plus 12 cents. Trumpet one goes in the center, trumpet two slightly to the right, trumpet three a little bit more and so on. So if we go to the trumpet master bass you see that I've used these curves mostly cutting some of the highs and a little bit of the low rumble that's unnecessary you know having this M shape tends to work most of the time. I boosted a little bit of the low mids because they were lacking a little bit of body to me and Similarly to the previous template, I've used an insert reverb, you know. You see me doing this throughout the video quite a bit, you know, just using reverbs in different amounts and with slightly different settings to basically place the instruments of the orchestra in a different place, but also motion reverb and an impulse response. So uh, what we have over here for the trumpets is basically this chroma verb. The very first thing I changed was from room to concert hall, just to give it a, a bigger kind of sense of space. But also in the second page, this early and late reflection by default will be on 50%. So basically you get a little bit of both. But what I did was lowering it to zero. And this is just so I can handle the early and the late reflections, you know, separately. Also, I have turned the modulation depth uh, to zero because we don't need that. I didn't, I didn't touch any of the width and I kind of tweaked some of the, these parameters a little bit, you know, no pre-delay because it's early reflections. Change the size to 60%, density can go up and down. I think it doesn't make a huge difference in terms of sound. Decay doesn't do anything because we disabled the late reflections. And what distance does, you know, uh, is, as you can imagine, is just either pushing the instrument further back or moving it closer to us. And finally, 75% wet and 30% dry. This is only because I wanna, I wanna keep a little bit of that clarity and I don't want to push these instruments too far away. And at the end of the stage, we're using a couple of different scents that are the same for the, for pretty much the entire orchestra. You know, we have a medium reverb with a 2.13 seconds uh, decay. This is an impulse response, so it's a different type of reverb from the insert we were talking about before. And this, this basically creates a nice tail that is consistent across the, orchestra, across the orchestra because we're using the same reverb for all the other instruments as well. But also it's a, it's a real space that was sampled. I haven't tweaked this too much. Oh, actually, I seem, it looks like I did. I think I cut some of the highs. Sometimes these cheap plugins tend to have, um, I don't know, like a metallic sound to me in the high end. And quite important as well is this pre-delay, 17 milliseconds, because I don't want this reverb to cover all the transients. Right after this, we have on the same channel strip, so on the reverb channel and equalizer, this is just to shape the sound further. And the second reverb is a longer, you know, larger impulse response that I picked from one of the larger hall spaces. And what we have here is a 2.43 and a, and a longer pre-delay. So I'm basically stuck in two reverbs together and followed by that I use an exciter just, just basically to bring back a little bit of that brightness that we lost by using equalizers and, and the reverb and a post EQ, cutting a, a couple of really annoying overtones I didn't like. And overall lowering some of the high frequencies uh, that we introduced with, with the exciter. The exciter is not it's not an equalizer. It doesn't. It doesn't work that way. I think it introduces more natural overtones. So basically, these equalizer and the exciter are not cancelling each other out. If that's what you're wondering, here's how the trumpets sound like in isolation. And this is without any of the processing.
So it's not bad, it's just very dry. I actually really like this sound. As we said, the same concepts will apply for the rest of the templates, you know. I pretty much have the same kind of effects for all the other instruments as well, but using different parameters. So here's the trombones. You can see some of the curves in the equalizers are a little bit more dramatic. The distance, you know, in the reverb is just much bigger, you know, and I also have a bigger kind of space using some post EQ in the equalizers as well. The same pitch shifters we had on the trumpets as well, and nothing on the bass trombone because it's not necessary because it's a different instrument. I'm gonna jump to the strings because once again it's a very similar kind of concept, but you see that this is 60% dry and 50% wet because strings are meant to be closer you know, to the listener than brass. So I have slightly different parameters on the reverb for that and very different curves as well, cutting a little bit of the highs. And in general, using a couple of different equalizers to achieve a, a more distant sound, I should say. Here's what we have on each single track. Here's the EQ for the violins, cutting a little bit of the high mids and the highs as well, but also boosting a little bit of the low mids. It seems like all these instruments actually are lacking a little bit of body, so this helps for that. The second violin should have a very similar kind of EQ. You may have noticed this big dip between 1K and 2K on all these, all the instruments pretty much, you know, because obviously being sampled in the same space, you know, they, they have similar characteristic. And what I'm doing with double basses is slightly different. I'm not using any EQ whatsoever, but using a little bit of sub bass just to give it a little bit more of body, you know, just make them sound a little bit more modern. So let's jump to the woodwinds, uh, different, different processing uh, from, from the other instruments. And, and that's because, you know, these instruments are actually different samples you know, the sample, I mean, of course, they're different samples, but they're sampled in different space from the studio brass and studio strings. And, you know, they have quite a different tone. So uh, what I did to match that is this, and that is mostly to add a little bit of early reflection to the sound and this EQ. Woodwinds are probably the least impressive out of all these samples. Mm. Here's without any of the processing. So I didn't manipulate the sounds too much, I just wanted to add a little bit of depth. Let me show you some of the curves so that you can take some screenshots if you like, or if you're feeling lazy, you can grab this template for my Patreon. Uh, this is flute one. I didn't give much love to this oboe. I don't think I liked it very much. And clarinet sounded fine to me, so no EQ. And what about the bassoon? Here's what we have on the bassoon. And finally, we get into the full brass section. That wouldn't be that bad if it wasn't for the lack of articulation, like we discussed. For this, we yeah, we have it 100% dry with with a little bit of wet. Once again, adding a little bit of those early reflections helps putting, you know, pushing the instruments further back. But I think they probably felt to me like they were sitting pretty nicely with the rest of the instruments. And that's why I left this all the way to 100. Let me just A, B a couple of times. Yeah, it doesn't do much. And for the biggest part, all these channel EQs, uh, are empty. I've, there's no data in it. I, as you can see, it's a flat line, so I can just basically disable them, except for the tuba. So what I did for this was just cutting a little bit of the highs, just, you know, giving a little bit more depth. Now all that's left is percussion. For that, we have our usual convolution reverb on concert hall setting, 70% dry, 100% wet, and I put the distance all the way to 100 because percussions are meant to be the instruments that are si that are the furthest away from the listener. And I believe I may have done some stuff to some of the individual tracks as well to make them feel like this further away from us. So that's what we had on the piano. That's what we have on the harp over here alongside 
an extra insert river because it probably felt like like it wasn't it didn't have enough depth on timpani we have some drastic adjustments because they felt probably too close to me so that's why we're cutting so much of the highs but also i've used a compressor with a wide attack and a short release to basically push out the transients of the instruments because they felt it probably felt like they weren't they were not punchy enough so that's pretty much it the last thing we need to talk about is how to use some of these instruments with the mod wheel and because since they updated the X ESX 24 to this you know new version of it they changed a few things around and some people were struggling to find a way a way to do this so I've looked into it uh, it's quite simple all you have to do this by default will be on velocity so all you have to do is just change this to mod wheel this by default will be on 30 decibel just put it all the turn it all the way down yes and then you can just go to the mapping editor you know click uh, select all the zones of course select all the zones and click on this one and here where you see crossfade you can basically enter different amount what i ended up doing for most of the instruments was either 50 and 40. oh ooh, also i was gonna forget and this is actually quite important because it affects the sound so much i have some processing on the main main bass output what i'm doing over here is mostly like a smiley brighty kind of thing some compression just a couple of dbs of compression to push out the transients a little bit and of course a wide attack and short release some exciter similarly to what we did to the trumpets before to bring out some of the upper harmonics that we lost by using equalizers so heavily throughout and uh, and also this is strange um what did I do? Spreading the highs a little bit more just to give a slightly wider sense of space. So that's pretty much all. Despite the title of the video, you know, the clickbait and everything, you know, which is something you have to do. Yeah, <laughs> let's face it. Um, this is about making the most with what you have. Yeah, these instruments are not going to be able, obviously, to create anything that is particularly impressive. Yeah, at least from a realistic perspective, yeah? But um, this is more about, you know, being, being able to create a demo that is not only passable, but communicates the original intent of the music well. Honestly though, you could work with this. I think I could still write with it and people will still be able to understand what it is that I'm writing, you know, and that's the most important thing in produ when it comes to producing a demo. If I could allow myself a couple of changes would probably be upgrading to a better reverb because, you know, the cheap one that comes with Logic is not particularly good. And considering we've used so many instances to create, you know, depth, essentially, I think upgrading to something that is a little bit better could make quite a big improvement. And secondly, I would probably upgrade to uh, wood, a different woodwind library. Yes, because I don't like this very much, but that, maybe that's just me. I don't know. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful. I, I've been meaning to do, you know, an update to the previous one for quite a long time. I finally got to it. But uh, let me know if you have any question. Like and subscribe if you're new. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.